Today we're looking at immigration to the United States in the late 1800s. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Daily Bell Ringer videos. The United States is sometimes called the Great American Melting Pot because with the exception of Native Americans, the entire population of the United States immigrated here at one point and all of these different cultures have blended together to create American society today. Throughout all of American history, there have been people moving to America, pulled here for better economic opportunity, religious freedom, to live near family, or possibly to escape poor conditions in their own country of origin. But immigration to the United States was at its highest point from the 1870s through the early 1900s. It is estimated that between 1870 to 1900 that over 11 million people immigrated to the United States. Most immigrants traveled here from Europe, with a large majority coming from Ireland, England, and Germany, which had been the primary countries of origin of most immigration prior to the Civil War. However, after 1870, there were large numbers of immigrants also coming to America from Southern European countries, such as Italy and Greece. Furthermore, many Eastern European immigrants from Poland and Russia also made their way to the United States. A vast majority, nearly 70% of all European immigrants, entered America at New York City. The typical voyage from Europe to America during the mid to late 1800s was about 10 to 12 weeks at sea, but with better technology, by the early 1900s, the voyage could be made as quickly as five days. From 1855 to 1890, most arrived at Fort Clinton, also known as the Castle Garden, located at the southern end of Manhattan Island. Castle Garden was the first official immigration center in America. In 1892, the federal government established Ellis Island in New York Harbor as the official immigration center for New York City. Located no more than a few hundred yards from the recently completed Statue of Liberty, which was finished in 1886, now new immigrants to America would be greeted by the 300-foot-tall symbol of freedom and prosperity. In the first year it was open, Ellis Island would process over 400,000 immigrants, and its, in its first five years of operation, over 1.5 million immigrants came through the island. On the 27-acre island, newly arrived immigrants would have to wait in long lines waiting for medical and legal inspections to decide if they were allowed to enter the country. Many immigrants remained close to where they departed their boats arriving in America, primarily due to the fact that they lacked any money to move any further inland. They would go on to establish their own neighborhoods, such as Little Italy in New York. In fact, today New York City is considered to be one of the most diverse cities in the world, with an estimated 800 languages spoken there. Some immigrants arrived with more resources and were able to move further inland, and there they established their own communities and towns. Beyond simply European immigration to the East Coast, there were large Asian populations that immigrated to the West Coast at the same time. Many Chinese immigrants came to California during the California Gold Rush, but immigration continued to grow. Unfortunately, during the 1870s, there was an economic downturn and competition for work became fierce. Many Americans began to view Asian immigrants as competition to them getting work. In fact, in July of 1877, there was a three-day anti-Chinese riot in San Francisco in which many Chinese homes were destroyed and four people were killed. This violence, unfortunately, led to Congress passing the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, which brought Chinese immigration to a halt in America for the next 100 years. This nativist movement spread throughout the U.S. in the late 1800s and early 1900s, with many people, despite having immigrant heritage themselves, arguing that there needed to be more limitations on immigration to the United States. Millions of immigrants were drawn to large cities in the U.S. that were growing rapidly during the Gilded Age as factories were getting larger and larger. Unfortunately, many employers took advantage of immigrants who were new to the country and hired them paying small, unfair wages. Most immigrants were paid less than other workers who had lived in America for generations. Gradually, though, new immigrants overcame discrimination and unfair treatment and would go on to help shape our American identity. So with that, 
Hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.